top five books that impacted you the most? Like, what what are some books that uh, where you, when your kids ask you, Dad, give me five books I should read, what would those five books be? They probably wouldn't be my books. Uh, that my kids, I don't, think, I don't think my kids have read any any of my books. Look, if you're on a desert island and you only have one book, what book would you take? Probably you take the Bible, because the Bible has so many things about human life and and the way humans have gotten together over the years and interacted with everybody. Uh, and, and the Bible is an unusual and, and book when you think about it. Seventy five percent of it is the Old Testament. Um, Twenty five percent is the New Testament. But in both the Old and New Testament, uh, you know, there are a lot of a lot of wisdom in there. I just think that's probably one book you would probably want to want to have with you. Uh, maybe one of your books. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I want to know what you're going to say. If I'm on an island, I got the Bible. That's pretty good. If I got the business books on an island with no market, no technology, I'm screwed. Like, I, I probably need <laughs> a big book that I can make some fire. Like, give me the <laughs> biggest <laughs> book of all time. <laughs> what else would you say? You've read a lot. I mean, you. I, I do read a lot of books because I have programs where I interview authors, and I think to to when interview author, I generally like to read the book. So I'm um, I'm just reading uh, a number of books now for interviews I'm going to do. I just did an interview the other day of of uh, the man who led the raid on um, Bill McRaven. Bill led the raid to to capture Osama bin Laden. He had a book called South uh, uh, Sea Stories, and interviewing him, it's incredible how we caught Osama bin Laden mm -hmm. and how we. And, and at the time we caught him, they didn't know we actually had him. And so what happened was um, they had to take him out of his body bag. Talk about Admiral? Him? That's him, Bill yeah. Oh, he, he uh, gave uh, a speech Navy, that Navy went Seals. viral. That's uh, University of Texas. Yeah. Make your bed, you were saying. <laughs> well, what happened was they captured him. They put him in the body bag. They bring him back, and they unzip the body bag, and they pull him out and say, oh, is this Osama bin Laden? Well, his beard looked shorter than, than they had thought. Mm. So they weren't sure. They knew he was six foot four, but they didn't. So they didn't have a tape measure. So they, they saw a, another sailor there. He said, sailor, how tall are you? Six foot two. Come over here. Lie down next to this guy. Oh, you look like you're two <laughs> inches shorter. So he called President, Ob Ob President Obama and said, uh, like, we think it's him. We haven't done the DNA test, but I just had a soldier or sailor lie down next to him who was six foot two. This guy looks two inches bigger, so I think it's him. And Obama said, well, wait a second. You had a $90 million helicopter, and you didn't take a $10 tape measure with you. Why didn't you do that? <laughs> and so when, when he met with Obama in the Plus. Oval Office later, he, he, Obama gave him a tape measure. That's a, what a good story right there. <laughs> what a good story right there. $90 yeah. million, here's 10 bucks. Go measure it next time instead of putting a guy laying next to him. What else? So we got two books so far. Give me another one. Give me, give me one that's an evergreen one, not one that was just written, like something you read where you're like, because look, if there's something that a lot of people want to, first of all, everybody has to read the book, How to Invest, especially if you want to get into the business, because you're learning from 30 different people's philosophies, right. right? It's not like you're learning from one person. By the way, one thing that was very interesting is how everyone talked about Warren Buffett, like everybody edified him and gave him a ton of credit. Everybody was, it's as if they're mm -hmm. talking about, would you say he's the Michael Jordan of, of that industry? Yes, and the reason is this. He has averaged 20% a year for 60 years. 60 years. Not 20% a year for two years, three years. 60 years. I mean, that's incredible what he's done as an investor. Nobody's quite ever done that. And now he's still doing this when he's in his 90s, early 90s. So that's incredible. If you want to read a book about him, uh, there are a lot of great books, more books about, it, about Warren Buffett probably than Abraham Lincoln, if that's possible. But I would say uh, the book called Snowball is probably the best one on Warren Buffett. Really, really good book. Uh, Warren Buffett hasn't really written his own book in that in that sense. Uh, another book I've um, you know read recently. Um, there's a man named Sid Mukherjee who wrote a book called uh, "The Emperor of All Maladies" about cancer, and it was a really well written book. It won the Pulitzer Prize. His first book won the Pulitzer Prize. He has a new book out called "The Song of the Cell." He's his third book. The first book was on cancer. Second book is on um, on genes. Third book is on cells. It's on New York Times bestseller list right now. Um, I've just, that's it. No, that's the first one. The, that one, that one uh, won the Pulitzer Prize in his first book, which is pretty good to win your first book to win the Pulitzer Prize. And one he, I just interviewed him on, it's called Holy The Song Holy. of the Cell, which is his latest book. And um, I've just interviewed uh, another great author, John Meacham. Meacham has a new book out, it's number one best, bestseller on Abraham Lincoln. And, uh, you know, more books have written about Abraham Lincoln than anybody other than Jesus Christ. So it's incredible, and uh, but he has a lot of good insights in it. Um, I'm just finishing a book uh, that I'm interviewing the author on, Maggie Haberman, who wrote a book about uh, Donald Trump. It's a quite interesting book on insights about Donald Trump. There are an infinite number of Trump's books, but this one is uh, she covered him for the New York Times for 
four years, and it's a pretty interesting book. Why That's a confidence man. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. Uh, 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 I saw that one, yeah. But why, why do you think people are so enamored by this guy? Good, bad, and ugly. Is it because he's like a complicated personality? Is Very it? unusual person. I, yeah. I do know him. I've, I met with him, you know, when he was president a number of times, and uh, I would say uh, unusual, um, unusual person. Usually people become president of the United States have some government background. He didn't have any background in government, so it was a— uh, unusual situation. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe Future Looks Bright. If you believe Future Looks Bright, get your latest Future Looks Bright hat of Valuetainment. It says Future Looks Bright here. Future Looks Bright here. We got them in white. We got them in black. We got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan bought one, then he bought three. Then when those three people were in the office, they had to order 58 of them. Because people wanted the future looks bright hat, especially during times like this, because ain't nobody saying future looks bright. To order your future looks bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.